Halloween has always been my favorite time of year, ever since I was a kid. My family has had a tradition of throwing a kick-ass Halloween party. We bob frapples, eat candy, we drink now, and watch scary movies. But my favorite part has always been the costume contest. Between my two brothers and my parents, we always compete to see who has the absolute best costume. My brothers, Tito and Richie, have dominated the competition the last few years. I'll never forget the year Tito showed up as a French maid, or when Richie dazzled everybody as a charming doctor. They never let me forget it when they win, so I was really looking forward to the party this year. Unfortunately, work and issues with my girlfriend had distracted me from being diligent in finding my costume, and I found myself a mere two days away from the party, completely costumeless. You know how it is when you wait till the last minute. It's even worse when you have no idea what you want to be yet. I already knew my brothers had snagged their costumes. My dad wouldn't tell me what they were, but he did tell me that they had fought. I wasn't surprised. My brothers were idiots sometimes. Yes, they usually had the best costumes, but I was much more subtle in procuring my own. If only I had any idea what I wanted to be this year. I visited a few stores and went to the mall, but nothing caught my eye. Panic started to set in, staring blankly into space and wondering how hard I would hit Tito when, when he won this year. I noticed someone approaching my driver's side. I glanced sideways and was surprised to see a teenage girl gesturing for me to lower my window. She had long blonde hair, blue eyes, and beautiful tan skin. She wore a red cheerleading uniform and, for some reason, was very familiar. I lowered the window and looked at her. Yeah? Mr. Hyde? Don't you remember me? I blinked. Um, Brittany, my dad is George. He works with you in the office. Oh, that's right. How's it going, Brittany? I didn't know you were a cheerleader. Yeah, she rolled her eyes, seemingly annoyed. I came here to shop with my friends after a pep rally. They're dicks, though, and they thought it'd be hilarious to leave me here and make me walk home. Do you mind giving me a ride? I hesitated. This was my co-worker's daughter. If anyone saw her getting into my car, I glanced around the parking lot, making sure there was no one around. I shrugged. All right, hop in. She beamed. Oh, thanks, Mr. Hyde. Brittany was resilient. I've tailored a lot of costumes, but she lasted much longer than most people do. I'd already flayed her arms and legs and cheeks before she finally faded away. I made quick work of the rest of her and started the sewing process. Thank goodness I'm a small guy. Tito and Richie would have never fit into this costume. I showed up at my parents' place in a woman's skin for the first time since I was a teenager. I've been a librarian, homeless man, even a dentist. I regret killing Dr. Stanley, but none of them have been impressive enough. This costume, however took everyone off guard. My dad was a black guy this year. My mom had chosen to be old Miss Fraser from down the street. Tito had been lazy with his costume. His skin was falling off in several places. If he hadn't been wearing the uniform, I would never have guessed he was a zookeeper. Richie, I guess, was an Elvis lookalike. Or maybe he'd gotten too much blood in the guy's hair, making it stick all up like that. Well, it's safe to say I won the costume contest this year. <laughs> now I get to be the one who gloats. Until next year, anyway. <laughs>